tired of these guys not mentioning my name. I've been busting my butt to get back to this point. So, yeah, I'm ready to continue. Ladies and gentlemen, Derek Brunson. Clean sweep of the scorecards, all five rounds to the former champion, Robert Whitaker. What message have you got for the champ? I'm going to work hard. I think I've got some tricks he hasn't seen yet. And uh, I'll give him a good run. Robert the Reaper Whitaker. Please tell me that's on video. I've never been happier. I'm made for a fucking podcast. That's <laughs> dangerous. Listen to me, we're out of here. Welcome to UFC Unfiltered. Uh, Matt is finally back. I'm happy you're back, buddy. Um, and Matt was just saying before we came on that you didn't look at the card because it looks good. It really does look a, a great, it's, it's what's better than a great card coming up on Saturday. It's just, it's just a good feeling. Are you asking me, is that a legit question or are you just saying it like- it's kind of rhetorical, but also I, f- I figured you would, you know, uh, have a well, feeling about it. Not much is better than that. Jimmy, I'm so happy to see you. I am too. We have uh, D- Derek Brunson today. who We both love and also Robert Whitaker, who we both love. So, um, yeah, it's a love fest. It, it is. And what they have in common is they, they are both guys who are unstoppable, uh, who are both stopped by Adesanya, which, which shows you how good Israel is. The fact that he stopped both of these guys we have on today. Well, let's not go to negative town, but, but it's uh, not, it's a, pra- it's a praise for our, our great middleweight champion. And, and it's, it's to say that if he stopped these two guys, um, it's just a further testament to how he's one of the best to ever fight. I agree with that. Yeah. That statement. But let me ask you, it's a simple question. I'm a simple man. How's my angle, by the way? Your angle looks great, by the way. I was going to compliment on that, but I wanted to hear the question first. But I would say your angle is better than I've ever seen it. When the champ, Israel Adesanya, fought Derek uh, Brunson, yep. what color was his hair? Uh, well, it's what the same- color was his hair? Black. He hasn't changed his hair color since I've seen him. Well, obviously, you're not aware of the blonde Brunson. Oh, I thought you were asking about Israel Adesanya's hair. <laughs> yes, Bl- Blonde Brunson's a ki- Blonde is a killer. Something, it's almost it reminds me of Sylvester Stallone in Over the Top. When that hat gets turned around and he's ready to fucking You understand? Does he turn the hat around when he does it? He turns the hat around? You never seen Over the Top? No, and you've just convinced me to never watch it. I will now never watch that movie knowing he turns his stupid head around. <laughs> it's not a great moment in cinema. It really isn't. It doesn't sound But right. um, But the blonde Bronson, and I, I know, listen, I'm not a fucking uh, a, a voodoo guy. I don't have certain fucking, I, I'm not an OCD guy. Oh my God, I, I wore these socks when I won the title. No, I don't give a shit. That's all ridiculous. It's all mental. But having said that, you can't deny the blonde bronze. No, he's, uh, I want to say, is it five or six and oh, since he has been, bl- I think was Adesanya his last loss? I, I believe Adesanya was his last loss. Yes, it was. This uh, is what I want you to remind years me. Ago. I'm sorry, I'm talking over you. That's okay, buddy. I want you to, I, this is what I want you to remind me to ask. And don't, don't steal my question. I won't. Okay. Everybody goes, oh, well, what changed? What changed? No. What made him break out that hair dye? I'll ask what him. made him go blonde? And what is... <laughs> Am I getting to something here? What does the hair have to do with the head and the heart? What does it, Jimmy? And here's how you know he's keeping it, because he tweeted today or yesterday, blonde Brunson forever. Like, he said something like that, or is here to... St- he, he, he wrote something in praise of blonde Brunson, so he knows that it's he good. He does rock. know. See this? Who's that? Uh, I tar- it's a little blurry. It looks like you. Oh. Uh, uh, and I'm one of your daughters. I'm assuming yeah. I don't know which one. It's my oldest. She's gonna be uh, 13. And like, wow. That's crazy, man. I'm starting to feel like a grown up. Yeah, yeah, I know. That's... I don't know why I'm flexing. But... Still have a young man's guns though. Thank you. And You're attitude, Jimmy. I had such a good time with uh, with, with Dean Thomas and Dana. Dana. Oh, that's good. Where Dana were you? Class. Dana. Dana was in and out. You know what I mean? The, 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 uh, 
the fucking the elk boys were there. Am I saying oh, the fucking what's the name of the kids? I'm not saying it. I'm, the elk boys. The elk boys. The elk boys. Who are they? <laughs> You're not young and hip and with it, obviously. You did. You said who are they? Yeah. Oh my goodness, they're the fuck. They're like YouTube stars, man. They're very. Mean, do you mean the island boys? I'm an island boy. I don't even know that word so long, but I know. It's yeah, island yeah, yeah. Boy. No, I, no, I don't know. Their, it wasn't them. Okay. No, 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 no. These guys are like, oh, they're okay. very popular. I didn't. Hey, I hung out with them a few times. Very nice kids. Yeah. No, I'm happy for you. I'm glad you enjoyed a nice trip while I sat in New York in fucking minus two weather with freezing rain. It sucked. I was in Kansas City, bro. It's not like I was in fucking. Oregon. Oh, yeah, yeah. Actually, I was in better shape here then. You're probably in better shape, man. You know? But, uh, hey. I don't want to get too much into what we did, but we had a fucking blast. You had fun. I do. I mean, I hang out with Dean Thomas. And me and Dean Thomas, we get along. Mm -hmm. You know? And a lot of times we spend time in the, uh, the fucking, what do you call Sprinter. Going this place to that place. So I put on my old Pandora. We sing some songs. You like Pet Shop Boys, Jimmy? Um, no, as a matter of fact, I absolutely don't. Jimmy, you think it's unmanly that I listen to some Pet Shop Boys sometimes? No, nothing you do is unmanly. I, I would just say that it's auditory torture. Well, I mean, I like that. How about this now? It's not their song. It's a remake, I believe, of an Elvis song. I know Willie Nelson did it. Always on my mind. Like, I, I do like not. that song a lot. You do like it? Love it. I don't know their version, but I do love Elvis's version. Oh, okay. Well, Jimmy, I'm just saying. You know, Jimmy, there's um, there's little things. I should have, I could have said and done. Yeah. I only had the time. You were only. I make up that. I make up that line, but. <laughs> By the way, that's a that's a, that's a, 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 a Willie Nelson song. No, not but I thought it was Elvis. No, it's Willie Nelson. Are you sure it's not Elvis? They both sing it, but it's Willie Nelson's song. But you saying Elvis took it from Willie Nelson? He sang it. He also did Sweet Caroline. Uh, Elvis didn't write My Way. That's a Paul Anka song. Guys, who wrote that? Who's, who first came up with that always on my mind? Oh, okay, it was written by Wayne Christopher, John Christopher, Mark James, uh, Brenda Lee Gwen, and Elvis Presley. Oh, okay. Elvis did release it before... Uh, Willie Nelson. I, I stand corrected. All right. I don't know much, but I did know that. And I know that song, Jimmy. And it makes me, you know, when I'm alone in my car or when I'm in a sprinter with Dean Thomas, I'm singing it. There's not much you can do about it. What are you looking up now, Jimmy? When um, when did he release You're Always On My Mind? Um, because El I do prefer Elvis's version. Do you? Than Willie Nelson's. I, you know what? I If you put all three of them up, Elvis... Willie Nelson and the Pet Shop Boys. I prefer the Pet Shop Boys because it's upbeat, ah. it's catchy. You know. Yeah. What year did he record that? I might, his might have been ten years later. Um, so yes, Matt, you are right. Uh, I'm glad I know that too. Cause I always thought Elvis covered a Willie Nelson song. Oh, Brunson is ready to go. Let's, Let's get go. Derek Brunson out here. We're yammering about yeah, nothing. Don't get me wrong. This stuff, the, the Pet Shop, this this talk we're having here is fascinating. Yeah, 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 we'll get back to it for another three hours. But we right now would like to <laughs> get to the great middleweight, Derek Brunson, fighting Jared Cannonier uh, this Saturday. I cannot wait for this fight. Hi, Derek. From the angle, it scared me for a second. You thought he, I know what you're saying. I thought he said, no, it's just, uh, you know, it, it's a superstition. And my hair is not blonde, but it is blonde. And that's what the fuck I'm talking about. Listen, right. Derek, I don't want, I, I'm, I'm so excited for this weekend. I yep. really am. Jimmy, you know, we were talking earlier and he was bringing up how the champ, you know, we, we have you on and we have, we have uh, Whitaker. Whitaker on, of course. And he's like, oh, you know, Israel, you know, we beat them both. And I go, Jimmy, wait. Stop. Hold on. I didn't say wait, it wait, like wait. that. I'm not done talking. All right. I go, right. Jimmy, you, Jimmy, I go, you stop it. He might have beat, he might have beat. Yes. Derek Bronson. But I asked him, I go, what color was Derek's hair in that fight? And then he we both agreed it was not blonde. It Absolutely. was not blonde. So he might have beat a guy named Brunson, but he right. did not beat the blonde Brunson. But hold on. I didn't Absolutely. say, Derek, I didn't say dismissively he beat both. What I said was it's a testament to how great 
Adesanya has been is that you and Whitaker, who are two unstoppable fighters, I did say unstoppable, and the fact that he was able to do it just is a testament to how how great a champion he is. Um, but I'm really happy for you. Uh, but by the way, what was what made you first dye your hair blonde? What was the first um, time you decided that you wanted to do that? Uh, it was around COVID time. You know, I want to try something ah. new, shake it up. So that's what we came up with. Was it, it coming good. off a loss or was it was it after a win or what was it? No, it was after a win. Okay. Yeah, all yeah. right. So it wasn't. Hey, 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 listen, we don't talk about those type of things, all right? Blonde Brunson undefeated. So like that's right. when we started it. That's exactly my point. That that's what's been going on. Just nothing but wins. Yeah, you really look good lately. And uh I love the story. I mean, I mean, you're 38 and Jared is 37. I think you guys are three and four. And both of you guys are in line for a shot at the title. Um, I, I, I would say the winner of this fight, I would love to see get a shot at uh, who, whoever wins at uh, Adesanya. Whitaker, do you think a decisive win in this fight will get you another shot at him? Oh, yeah, 100%. You know, that's been the whole build up plan. You know, this has been all a part of the plan. You know, get title shot. And I saw this coming when the fight wasn't booked very soon. The title fight. So, yeah, it was, you know, fight Cannoneer, get a title shot. Both of those guys are, are in great shape. But you never know if, God forbid, something happens uh, where, where Whitaker is unable to fight. You know how these things happen. You and Jared are right there, and one of you guys, I'm sure that they would ask to step up if, if that would be. If, you know what I mean? I think that they booked it purposely like that after having lost a few fights over the years. Have, have a, the two contenders right there. So if, God forbid, anything happens, you're there. Yeah, for sure. You know, but ain't nothing going anywhere you know this weekend have a lot riding on in the title fight and then the the fight with me and jared so like everybody's ready everybody's ready to go so you know uh the title fight gonna go on and the number one contender fight gonna go on you're finally fighting somebody around your age i believe right how was childish uh -huh. 37 yeah, you said you it was uh it was satisfying beating all the young guys that, what is what's so satisfying about that yeah, just knowing, you know, all these, the new generation coming up and you can still hang with these guys, you know, these, these young guys with a lot of energy that come in the gym every day doing backflips, you know, opposed to like, I'm like, oh man, I'm tired, you know, I'm feeling a little beat by Wednesday. So yeah, it feels good to be able to compete with those type of guys at, at 38. And you, go ahead, you know, no, no, man, you, you, you. I'm going to point, ready? Me or you? Who talks first? Thank yeah, you, Jimmy. Yeah. It's so, it's like that part in Star Wars, The Force Awakens, when he had him on his knees. You talk first, I talk. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I love um, You know what's great about me going first? Now I forgot what the fuck I was going to ask him. Mm -hmm. This fucking Zoom thing's a circus. I know, I know. <laughs> it happens. It's okay. But, uh, oh no, it was a jujitsu question. Being a jujitsu man, have you been, put, even in the off season, you put the gear on at all or no? Yeah, no, I put the gi on. Um, wish I have more time to put it on. Yeah. But yeah, no, I put the I put the gi on. I try to at least once a week. But um, yeah, obviously with MMA and getting ready for fights, there's really no off season. It's a lot of no gi. Hundred percent. No, I get it. When I was fighting two two and a half months before, I'm not wearing it. So if you're fighting it, you're fighting how many times a year? You know, you slip it in when you can. I just yeah. Some guys, you know, they get to a certain level and they fucking burn their gi. So I didn't know oh, yeah. if you were that guy. <laughs> they get rid of it. They burn the gear. So I didn't know if you were that guy, but you're still wearing the gear here and there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely try to get in that in the gear at least once a week. Um, but yeah, when I'm training for fights, like you said, it's, it's kind of tough to, to make that. And you also, nobody wants to be in a position, like, you know, as, as the career goes a little bit later, like some guys, all of a sudden, they feel like gatekeepers and nobody wants to. Is, is that part of why it felt so good to beat these young guys coming up? Because you know that they can't look at you like that. Like, they can't look at you like, well, they got to get through Brunson first. Like, you're actually, you know, you've proven yourself you're a legit contender for the title and they can't throw that gatekeeper label at you. Oh, yeah, for sure. You know, um, it's about just beating whoever in front of you and taking care of guys, racking up wins, um, getting finishes. You know, that's the whole fight game. Keep elevating your status. And that's been the focus. And, you know, I've been working my way up. I love your shirt, too. And I, and I saw at a press conference you were talking about I beat up domestic abusers. Did you ever uh, were you ever bullied or did you ever see anyone bullied that like uh, that? I mean, that's obviously a very good emotion to have. 
But was there anything that sparked that, like with, with bullying or you saw that happening? Um, you no, know, me and my team sat down and we, you know, just was talking and some of the things like things going on and some of the things that we were against. And we decided, you know, that's one of the things that we we're against and speak out on it. Yeah. You see, so you, you, you're one of those guys, you just don't like when someone is physically bullying somebody weaker. Yeah, for sure. You know, um, martial arts is about respect and, you know, control. I think that's the biggest thing. A lot of parents put their kids in martial arts they learn how to protect themselves and then they also learn control. You know, most of the time they don't have to act, actually act out because they actually know how to defend themselves with the confidence. How long does that take? Like how long does it take when you, and Matt would know too, like when you're, you're training and you're beginning to train before you start to feel like, you know what, I would rather walk away from this than engage in it. What's up, man? You, you're thinking about making a comeback? You trying to get some training there, man? Seek a career that? or something? <laughs> See, like you're probing, trying to get some information for yourself. <laughs> no, I'm very, I'm very curious because I hear a lot of martial artists say that, and it's I don't understand the emotion because I'm not in that world. So I'm, I'm wondering, like, at what point do you start to feel like, man, I would much rather walk away from this, like, like in the street or with a guy, than actually have to kick the shit out of him. I don't know. It's laughable, honestly. You know, especially when the guys were amped up. When you actually know you can fight, it's almost laughable. Like, I'm I'm sure Matt can attest to. Like, guys, it's really hard for like just a random person to like make you want to fight them. It's very true, but you do kind of want to smack some people. <laughs> That's the kind of like because you know when someone's so arrogant, you're like, dude, I just. You have no idea what the fuck could just happen right now. I just want to smack your face, but you don't want. But like I tell my, 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 my students and stuff, there's too, especially in Long Island, there's just too many assholes out there. You can't yeah. smack everybody. That's the you know, that's you, the New York in you, man. That's the New York in you. Yeah, you can't have that, right? You gotta. Yeah. So I let them. I say, hey, you know, look, I put it nice. I don't do that in my kids' class. Say, look, can't smack every asshole out there. I don't do that, but I do let you know. You can't. If you did that, you'd be you'd just be locked up right away, especially where I come from. Derek, yeah. where, where, where are you living now? Uh, I live in North Carolina still. I just, I have a house in Florida so for my training camps out there. Oh, okay. Yeah, people are laid back a little bit more there, I, I, I'd imagine. Yeah, not not quite as uh, brash as uh, the people up north. Yeah, you see somebody steps on Jimmy, little Jimmy's toes on the subway, fuck. Look out. Yeah, little Jimmy goes, ow, and moves to the next car. Little Jimmy's <laughs> not stupid. Little Jimmy's not getting hit by a homeless guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I walk away from fights, but for different reasons. Because I, I, there's nothing I can do but walk away or get my ass kicked. You guys walk away for a reason. I would love to have to walk away because you don't want to hurt somebody. Yeah. So you don't buy. You don't buy somebody. It's funny to, when when guys can really fight too and really take care of themselves. The, the posturing people do uh, when they're kind of going back and forth. It doesn't affect you at all the way it would affect a regular person. No, nah, I don't care. I, like I said, it's laughable to me. You know, and until. If somebody harmed my family member or something like that, then that's a different story. But like just talking, you know, um, and uh, I mean, you you gotta be you gotta be in my space. But just talking is not enough for me. And what have you seen out of Jared Kennedy? Jared's looked really good too. He's beaten some great fighters. He's been on a really good roll. I mean, he had uh, he got uh, the decision loss to Whitaker. Um, but what are you expecting out of him? And what do you think has been so impressive about him in the last, say, three years? Um, Jared's just a tough guy. You know, he's a well-rounded guy. Um, he looks to come and get the finish, try to um, really bring it with his stand-up, with his hands, you know, hard kicker. Um, yeah, man, he's, he's just a tough dude, you know, like like the rest of these fighters. He come out and fight, you know? Jimmy, yes. enough of this MMA stuff. Let's 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 ease up his mind a little bit. What you been doing when you've been trying to relax, Derek? Any new movies lately? Any books you've been reading? What do you let us know? Turn me on to a new series. Just playing games, man. I, I play a lot of spades on my phone. I play uh, I got the Xbox with me, so I play the Xbox just to chill out. Um, that's what I'm doing, man. Just chilling out, relaxing. The, the game Wait, cut. Xbox game of choice. Tell me, what do you what do you play on there? Fortnite, man. Fortnite. You like Fortnite. You yeah, know, man, it's, it makes you think, man. Did you ever hear of Nick Merckx? Yeah, yeah, I know Nick Merckx. He was on here the other day. We were yeah. What a nice kid. We like him. Yeah, but, yeah. Uh, he's big into that, too. He yeah, really streams it. Do you stream? No, I, I don't stream like that, but I know, like, guys like Nick Merckx, he's a real big streamer. Like, big-time gamer. 
you like so you like the um the, it now you like Fortnite and again that's a um Fortnite is it's the um I know what it is obviously but it's the uh it is a um what is it battle royale though it's a list battle game. royale yeah that's only that's the only type of games I like like I used yeah to love, yeah like I used to love Halo and and I and uh, Call of Duty but I'm telling you if you if you ha- if you get the Oculus Quest two okay. Population one, dude. I know he's like a nerd right now. Jimmy, give me bear with me. He wants to know. <laughs> it's okay. Population one is is a similar thing. It's you know squads. You're taking out everybody else and okay. The battle royale, so fucking good. If you ever want to try that, I turn you on to that. I want to okay. take turning you on to that. Population one, so fucking good, dude. I love it. I'm gonna play this. So I just went to Kansas City for looking for a fight, and just like you, you bring your Xbox, dude. I put the Oculus right in my carry on. And I fucking, you know, all my downtime is fucking, I fucking love it. Anyway, so <laughs> I Doug, can't, you know, did you ever try, uh, did you ever try uh, VR, Doug? I made me a little motion sick. I play chess and a few other things, but I, I get dizzy trying to walk around in that, in with the virtual reality helmet. Nah, I, I've tried the Oculus once, but yeah, it looked pretty cool, man. I, I got to get one of those things, you know, I might buy one for, for the kids as a gift and then I just use it all the time. So, and see if you like it. Yeah. All right. Well, look, good luck on Saturday. This is, uh, to me, uh, could very, very easily be the co-main event. I mean, this is a great fight between you and Jared Cannonier. Uh, I, I really hope it goes well for you. I, w- I would love to see you get a shot at the title. It's been really, really amazing to watch um, what Blonde Brunson has done. It's incredible. Unstoppable. So, unstoppable. Yeah, yeah, unstoppable. All right. Thank you, guys. All right. Good luck. Take care, Derek. Take care, Brunson. By the way, me and the wife, you're watching uh, Ozark. It's good, dude. Season four, you watch, you, you gave up. I, I didn't love season one. I thought it was well acted. Oh, I just, oh, why do I keep bringing that up to you? You don't even watch it. Yeah, I don't love it. I didn't hate it. It didn't suck. I just didn't love it. Well, we're on season four, and it's, it's man, it ain't slowing down. It's getting right to fucking. Do you watch Yellowstone? I tried to get into that. I watched one. It was The first episode was very good. I just couldn't really care that much. I'm going to give it one more shot. Hey, after going to. To Laura Sanko's farm on this latest episode of looking for a fight and being with Dean Thomas in a cowboy hat. Any, I don't want to see anything with a cowboy hat on. No, some like things that. you can't unsee. You understand? Yes, I do. I, I totally things get things it. Happened on that farm that I never even. I don't even want to think about. And I'm going to wait till the show comes out and you'll see what I'm talking about. I don't want to think about it. What do you think? With I know Whitaker's coming up. Um, and I wouldn't throw you under the bus like you attempted to throw me under the bus. By the way, that's why I stole your question. I'm I'm sorry, Jim. That's okay. That's why I stole your question. Um, (laughs) I knew you stole. I knew you didn't give me a chance to get too upset about it. Nope. You know? But, uh, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we'll- that, that to me was that really, that, and I meant when I said that about Asanya, because uh, Brunson is so good and he's such a hard guy to stop. And so is Robert Whitaker. I mean, who had God knows how many fights in a row without being stopped. And, uh, that's what proved to be that, uh, Adesanya had power is when he, when he dropped, uh, Brunson, I'm like, wow. Um, you know, I, I could have seen him winning a decision, but I never thought that would end that way. So I think, uh, Israel's power is very underrated. Uh, as it was by me as well. Well, dude, listen. I mean, Robert Robert Whittaker has been looking amazing since his loss to the champ Israel Adesanya. So yeah, I, yes, I, he I has. See what improvements? He, I mean, I mean, look, look what he look how he fought versus uh, Jared Cannonier. I mean, he looked phenomenal, um, Robert Whittaker. Yeah, so, that's Cannonier's uh, recent loss was was decision to Whittaker. Um, yeah, I'm happy for him that he's getting, and I like the fact <clears throat> I'm going to mention to him too. He's been pretty patient since that last loss to Israel. He, uh, he seems like he was just willing to, uh, wait until it was his shot again to, to fight him. And that was how many fights ago that was, uh, yeah, that would be four fights or three fights after that. A lot of guys would have complained, uh, if they stayed at the top for that long and didn't get a rematch with, with three fights, um, without fighting three fights first. Jimmy, yes, sir. We almost have to talk about the card. I'm looking at the co-main. It's amazing. Event. It's it's. I'm looking it's at a- the co-main event. The co-main event. How come you don't think that's a good fight? Derek Lewis versus Tai Tuivasa. Crazy. That that is that's wild. That's listen. How about this, man? I I love I love Ty, but I've been I've been I've been not I, I'm not definitely not rooting against Derek ever, but I've been picking against him lately because it's just the way I've been picking. Yeah, and why? And, I'm, and then, I, then I, then I, then obviously he's been proving us wrong. 
I say us because I think you've been right there with me. And I don't know. I, I, and then I get like, why do I pick against him? He's so more intelligent than people think he's just a big, silly guy with power. No, dude, he's intelligent. That wasn't a lucky uppercut that he landed on Curtis Blades. Right. Lucky. It was planned. He knew where that head was going to be. And he was patient enough to do it. Oh, he's so powerful. And Tai Tuavaza is aggressive. Oh, dude, that's going to be a crazy fight. Dude. That's going to be a crazy fight. That could be a main event any, any day of the week. Yeah, it really could be. That's definitely a fight night main event. I'll, let me see. Uh, now I'm getting excited. It's a great card. Yeah, and that I, is I like when it starts at 10 o'clock. I like when it starts that. You, you do. Yeah, you don't like it. I like earlier, though. Like, you know what? If it's on the West Coast or if I, like, I'm on the West Coast, I kind of like it, too, because it's nice and early to watch the fights. Yeah. No, it's good. It's good, man, because I, I'll be at the school in the morning, do my thing. You know what's great about Ty? He was, I want to say, 9-0. and And then he dropped three fights. Uh, Spivak, uh, 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 Blagoy Ivanov, and, uh, and JDS. And then he has won four straight. That was an amazing stop to what could have been a, a devastating skid. Uh, you forget that Tuivasa had lost three, and now he's back to winning four. And he's beating good fighters. Sakai uh, Hardy, who hits like a fucking sledgehammer. Uh, Stefan Struve, um, Hunt Sucker. You know what I mean? So it's it's nice to see him winning again. Hey man, styles make fights. So there's this fight. I, I can't see it really being a grappling match. <laughs> I see, I see. I know I could be wrong, but sure. uh, I, I, it's gonna be a bad. It's gonna be it's gonna be wild. And I don't. I do not see it going the distance. I don't want to jinx it. I don't see it going the distance. <laughs> listen, dude, let's, no. let's talk about these. Uh, let's talk about these fights. And let's talk about them one by one. What do you think? Um, sure. We can talk about this. There's a lot of fights. I, by the way, on the uh, this just shows you how good of a card this is, Matt. There was something I was looking at. Um, Hanada Moicano against uh, Alexander Hernandez is an early prelim. Oh, wow. That's how fucking packed. Uh, main event of the prelims, uh, uh, Jared Vendera against uh, Arlovsky. Arlovsky's on the prelims. Like That's how stacked this card is. Oh, the, the card is amazing. And uh, I also AC O'Neill uh, against Montefiore. That's a great fight too. Why do you always got to take the one I'm about to say? Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't know. You love Casey O'Neill. I know that. And Roxanne. I Both know. Of Casey. I mean, that's old school kind of versus new school. And uh, and Roxanne, a lot of times rises to the occasion. But I believe this is her last fight. I'm not sure about that. Okay, guys, go look on our Instagram. I think I saw something, I, or else I'm not sure. Uh, but please, guys, look at that. I'm telling the, the producers. Uh, look and see if she announced that it's a last fight. And if she didn't, maybe I'm just a moron. But Roxanne versus Casey O'Neill. That's going to be interesting. Casey's, Casey's a, it is her last fight. And hey. she's undefeated. Casey's undefeated. Eight, no. Yeah. It's not Casey's last fight, Jimmy. No. She's only getting started. So look, she's going to try to go out on a high note, Roxanne. Who has, she had a great career. She, she, and then she's a, a sweetheart of a person. Everybody loves her. The happy warrior, you know? By the way, uh, you know, Macy Barber was 8-0 when she faced uh, Mataferi. And I, I think Macy was pretty heavily favored in that fight. And, and Roxanne uh, got the upset win. Yes. So that's, you know, 8-0. You, you wonder how some fighters are really superstitious and some aren't. Does Casey O'Neill even know that? Or she Can I tell you right now? Yeah. From what I know of Casey O'Neill, she probably gives zero fucks about it. Yeah. She's a badass. She don't even pull no punches with that. She's not just trying to be a sweet girl. No, she's just a badass. I like and listen. She's in the right game for it. That's why we wanted her on here. She fights. Yeah, that's how she is. In the way she fights, that's her attitude. I like it. I love it. I think it's great. And she's one of my favorite new fighters. You know. Yeah. Uh, Pike asked against uh, Bobby Green. The opening fight of that main card is an incredible fight as well. All right. He's coming off a win of uh, Quinta and uh, Bobby Green and um, Nasserat's coming off a, a loss, actually, from Dan Hooker. So that's very, that's interesting. How is he going to deal with that loss? And Bobby Green seems to be, like, really, he, even when he loses, he barely loses. He's one of those guys. So he could upset anybody. So that, that's very interesting. Who do you oh, think yeah. is going to, hold on, who do you think is going to win? Uh, we don't have to do all our picks. No, but, no, we'll uh, do like the last three. We'll do the main three. What do you think of uh, Cannoneer Brunson? Cannoneer and Brunson? This is what I think. I mean, I like I like Jared Cannoneer. I think he's a beast. 
He knows how to fight, man. But Brunson's been fig figuring out a lot of puzzles lately, man, from good guys. He knows how to get that decision. Not only decision, he'll get a, he'll, he'll stop a fight, but if it does go to decision, you know, it's usually going to him because he knows how to get in and sprinkle in those takedowns. And he's got a good, he manages the distance very well from the striking to the grappling range. So Jared, I think, is going to have to be worried about the striking and the grappling. He's going to have to fight that off. Could he do that and effectively get an onslaught off? Uh, I, I'm going to give it to Blonde Brunson by decision. I think Jared's very durable. I think he's going to, I think he's just going to have to deal with the takedowns or the threat of Derek's uh, constant clinching and, and beating up against the cage type of thing. So, yeah, I'm going to go with Derek by decision. Yeah, and Cannonier has beaten guys who are good on the ground. Branch, uh, uh, Jack Hermanson, uh, Gaslam. So it's not like anyone who's good on the ground gives, give, you know, is a hard night for him. So yeah, I'm also going to take Brunson by decision. Um, if he didn't have as many wins against guys who are very competent on the ground, I might say Brunson by a stoppage, uh, a submission of some sort. Uh, but I'm, I'm going to say, uh, yeah, also Brunson by decision. All right. I like that. Now, Derek Lewis versus Ty Tuavasa, man. Uh, ah, now look, I like Ty a lot. I think he's a wild man. I like him, but I think he's gonna. I think he's gonna try to put Derek away, and I think in doing so, Derek's gonna find the shot and it's gonna end it. So I'm gonna say maybe, maybe first round, or some, it's guy. I, I I see a first. I see it being wild, and I say maybe for a first round knockout by Derek Lewis. I'm going to take down. I hate saying, you know what? Can I say why I hate saying that, Jimmy, before you say your thing? Yes. You know why I hate saying that? Because I'm not, I don't want to shit on the other guy saying that this guy's losing it around. Like I did that about Charles Oliveira and he ended up getting the strangle and I think the third instead of the second, the first. And you're like, oh, you're choosing, or the second one. When did, when did he get him? Uh, it was the sixth. <laughs> How do you do that to me? <laughs> I just, I just kept going, oh, okay. But uh, <laughs> when I think Charles Oliveira got Dustin Poirier in the second or third, guys, the third. But the second he got the takedown, but he very well could have got that in the first. So yeah. is that, does that mean that I think that Dustin Poirier stinks as a fighter? Absolutely not. I just think styles make fights. And I think that Tai Tuavasa has such, his balls are so huge. He's got so much courage that he's going to put his fucking head in that alligator's mouth. He's going to be throwing, he's going to be in that, right in the danger zone, looking to hurt Derek Lewis. And in doing so, he might, he might get his, he might take a bad one. And plus, it's not a disgrace in the heavyweight uh, division because, you know, guys like, you know, Calvin Cater getting hit by Max Holloway, there's not a heavyweight alive that could take that many shots from another heavyweight. I mean, you want to look at, uh, uh, was it Hunt, uh, Hunt against Bigfoot? I mean, maybe that's a very rare heavyweight fight exception. But in heavyweights, you don't see guys taking that many shots for that. You know what I mean? So to say that I think that Brunson can put anybody away by connecting, it's just a matter with a guy like Brunson. You say, do I think he's going to connect properly first or is Tuivasa? Because I don't think either of these guys can take too many shots from the other guy. That's not an insult. It's just, they both hit like fucking, uh, like, you know, superhuman strength. No. Yeah. I, I agree. I mean, the reason Cyril gone, um, didn't get knocked out was because Francis didn't land anything really solid and clean. Um, Did you ever see Derek Lewis hit that punching machine? No. Well, fucking watch that somewhere. See how that looks. Now imagine that's your chin. Yeah, I, that's exactly it. So he needs one of those. He doesn't need two. He doesn't need three. He needs one. All right. He needs so, one shot. He has one punch. Hey man, listen, dude, let's, uh, let's address something really quick. Sure. Because if we, we should, because not, you know, we talk about the latest news and whatnot, and this guy's yes. a friend of ours. Every, you know, the um, the mob has come for uh, Joe Rogan, you know, and I don't, I'm not sure how long you know Joe for. Almost I know thirty Joe, years. How long? Almost thirty. Yeah, so I know him. What twenty? I know him. I know him since two thousand and one. Yeah. So, you know, anybody that knows him knows he's a genuine guy. Yeah, and knows that he's a he's a good guy. He's a good guy. And I believe that if anybody had any content out there for however long there is, you could cut things up to make a guy look anyway. Yeah. So, and I'm sure they could do that with you, with your shows from back in the day. They could do that from anybody. Any, 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 especially a comic or podcaster who's been talking long enough. Yeah. Anybody, even anybody, pro wrestlers from the yeah. rock 
to whoever. They could examine anybody and say things that might have been taken out of context or just downright wrong and whatever, just not maybe maybe you slipped, you just said something that came out wrong or they can cut it off to make it look a certain way. But at the end of the day, what is what is the agenda here? Why are you trying to, what are we, you know, we, we're trying to assassinate somebody's character for what? You know, why is somebody, feel, are people feeling threatened, you know? And they don't like him. They, they're, Matt, they don't like him. They don't like what he's saying and they want him silenced. That's it. There's no higher reason. They just don't like him. So they have to tell themselves he's dangerous or awful. It, it's bullshit. The problem is, Jimmy, he, he reaches five times the audience or more than they do. So yeah. the people, they, you know, he has, you know, five times the audience and then they just want whatever they want to put out to be, that's it. Nobody that's tells it. this. That's right. So I don't think he even, I don't, I don't believe Joe Rogan wants the controversy at all. No, he doesn't. He just, ha- he just likes the follow up. He has people on that he thinks interesting and he, and he, and he goes over the things he wants to go over, man. And otherwise he's just fucking around, drinking beer and smoking weed on his thing. Leave the guy alone. I don't know, dude. It makes me sick. It just makes me sick because you see what they're trying to do. But also, you're trying to go, look, he's a bad person. Look what he said. Look what he did. This is a like, positive you're too, only a Matt. fool, Jimmy. If you, if anybody, somebody's a fool if they believe in that. And somebody's a downright, like, disgusting person if they were friends with him and then they go, oh, oh, I seen that. Oh, man, you're right. He might be, ba- really? Do you think he's bad? Why? You're afraid somebody to come after you? Right. You disgust me, Jimmy. This is a positive. And I've been talking about him on the radio show in the morning as well. This is a positive in a way, though, because Spotify so did the right thing by standing by Joe. So I, I, Spotify should also be commended because they're under tremendous pressure. He did not, uh, his own babyish employees were whining about Joe. The Spotify CEO did not get rid of Joe. Neil Young and his nonsense didn't get rid of Joe. This other clip where things are taken out of context didn't get rid of Joe. So Spotify deserves credit too for standing by him. I mean, listen. I feel bad and I don't feel bad. Joe's got fuck you money. There's no Joe going away. Joe can't, if Joe, right. something happens with him in Spotify, it's not like, oh my goodness, is he going to be homeless? No, dude, right. the guy is beyond fine. He has his family, he has his friends, he has people that love him. His co- he could, He's the type of guy that I feel he could always just go, you know what, I'll just go do my comedy. Like he could just go do that. And, yes, and, and do arenas. And he could do a podcast, and he, he could do anything the guy wants to do. So there's no, he's too big to get canceled. It's just not happening. So they should just fuck off, you yep. know, because nobody's abandoning the guy. And if anybody did abandon a guy, I would look at that guy. I would look at the guy or the person, whoever it is, who's one second with him. And then, oh, you're right. Maybe he's bad. Oh, really? Maybe I shouldn't be too keen on you. Right. If you're such a fucking, you know, fair weather friend, so, so to speak. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. You know, it makes me sick, Jimmy. It's really, it's very annoying. But I had texted Joe that day and he's, he's fine. You know what I mean? Like he's, he's, he's bully, He's hanging in there. Okay. Um, it's got to suck being the most fucking popular guy in the world. Like it that. is. Oh yeah. Yeah. That'll be for Joe. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Cut that out. That was my ego. I'll tell you, he <laughs> probably doesn't want it. I guarantee that you don't want to be that. You don't want to be. Yes, that I do. Do you want to be Jimmy? Why not? Honestly, would you want to be as popular as don't you think? And I'm not saying I'm as popular as you, but I'm saying, don't you think like I, personally me, I think we got, I got just, I got yeah enough. I got enough to, to like be humble enough to be like, Oh, that's nice. He wants a picture. That's a, but it's not overbearing. Right. You can still go out to dinner and not be fucking mob. Yes, exactly. You know I'm going to the supermarket. I'm not that guy. Well, actually, I'm not. I don't. Like I, I could go to dinner in the comedy club after I work it and not get bothered for a picture. <laughs> That's not true. I do enough to have my uh, kids think I'm a big shot, and then uh, right. Oh, we had the the the, uh, the former champ. Oh, good. I was just wondering where's Robert Whitaker. Okay, he's here. Let's get Robert Whitaker on. Ah, uh, yes, Robert Whitaker. Hey, Robert. G'day, guys. How are you? Very well. How are you? You what's up, yeah, Robert? Right. You know the guys that never have the mic issues or the camera issues or the guys that do their um their, their Twitch, right? You do Twitch? Yeah. So that's why look, look, he's ready to go right away. There's no can yeah. you hear me? Is my camera sideways? How is that going to Twitch? And what games are you playing on it? We'll get to the MMA shit in a second. I love video. <laughs> Tell me, Robert. I, um the Twitch is good. I um I had to put on pause obviously as the camp was ramping up and everything, and then you know, I'm blessed to have great fans and viewers because they were they were completely understanding. 
Uh, normally, I play a lot of indie games, a lot of Bethesda games, all good funs. You don't play uh, Battle Royales? Well, you see, the biggest thing for me, I, I don't, for one, I don't play shooters, really. But uh, Interesting. What do yeah, you play? What do you, what do you play? play a lot of like RPG, sandbox, open world, strategy games as well. Play a lot of that sort of stuff. Do you not like the shooter games or has it just never grabbed you? Yeah, it never grabbed me really. And um, man, it never grabbed me. Like I just never really took to it. I've played them, don't get me wrong. But like, yeah, no, not a big fan. Are you now, do you get caught up? Like when you're playing the game, are you someone that can sit there and play for six or seven hours and just get lost in it? Or do you, or do you have a very strict time limit where you just get uh, tapped out of it? I'll, I'll sit there until someone drags me away. Oh, like, <laughs> it's amazing that you do the 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 RPG ones because that's like the the role playing games, right? That's yeah. Like, what yeah. are they? I've never heard of them. Go ahead. Haven't you? Okay, so it's like a lot of character building, stats, statistics, like increasing strength, agility, dexterity, that sort of stuff. Oh. It's, uh, Almost like Dungeons think, and Dragons type stuff. Yeah, exactly. That's what I was going to say. It's exactly like uh, very much based off D and D. So it's kind of like being like you kind of enter this different universe for a little while and you and you try to build this character up and do you like do you like in in uh in game purchases and shit where you like buy things for like whatever the game money is uh no no really because they're, they're online games and uh, i don't play a ton of online games you know what's funny man like 20, fucking 20 years ago there's a, a game called everquest do you remember everquest yeah, sure i know yeah. you know what it is i know what it is yeah, yeah. i never played it it was like one of the first games that you're talking about right yeah Robert, so this girl that's laid, I was young, I was at a, I don't know, it's like my first apartment, so I was with this like older girl, and she, her, 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 she left her husband because all he would do was play EverQuest. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, I don't know, man. She's no. like, oh, he would just be in his room for hours and wouldn't pay attention to me and the kids. I'm like, oh, man, this shit's crazy. And that's the first I heard of that. And you could just get go in there and have a whole different, like people have their whole different, like their whole lives, their whole social lives are in there. Yeah. Yeah, yeah people, you have a balance, Robert. You have your school. Yeah, you well, not, that's it. You need balance. You need balance. Without balance, you've got nothing. When you play in there, Robert, do they know that they're playing with Robert Whitaker, or do you have another like uh, identity where they have no idea who you are? Uh, I don't. I don't play a lot of online games, so I don't oh, right, really play that. with other people. But when I do, it's usually under like my my moniker or like alias or whatever the hell my username is. You like the anonymity a little bit, just to kind of go and play and not have a bunch of questions or, or just to you know not be recognized um i don't know don't really care oh you <laughs> don't care either me. way don't think how, about it how are you socially matt and i were just talking about we have the level of fame where people will like know you and occasionally say hello and take a picture but how do you handle like a, a higher level being a, you know who you are does it drive you crazy sometimes or do you love it or might not nah, it's uh you know it's, i think it's a good thing like Fans are just showing their appreciation. You got to give back to them. You know, it, it makes them happy. You know, if you if you go out and someone asks for your photo and you take the photo with them, you've just made their day. You've just made their day. You know, and, and that's yeah. It, and it took no effort on my part, so you may as well. Yeah, and you, it's been uh, you've had three fights since the last Adesanya fight. And I was saying to Matt before that you seem to be like publicly, at least very patient. Like you you knew you were going to get another shot. But a lot of guys would 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 be demanding a shot faster, and you seem comfortable taking the fights in front of you. Uh, was that hard for you to, to be patient, or did you just know this was going to come? Not at all. It, all roads kind of lead to Rome. So um, I was enjoying the process. I was enjoying the journey. Every fight I was getting, in, every fight I was in, I was developing my skill sets a little better. Every fight I would leave a little bit better, take a little bit more from the fight, and you can see as. My skill set evolved, and as the fights evolved, that I, I believe I've gotten better holistically as a fighter. And I mean, main thing is I'm enjoying it a lot more. Yeah, that's the thing, Jimmy. I, I think, I mean, Robert, I want to. It's a question of my question is, how do you? You have everything going so great for you. How do you stay hungry? You have a, a beautiful family. You have an academy. You have your Twitch thing going. You have everything going great. You already were champion. Um, I'm sure you're fine financially. How do you stay hungry? You know that old saying of how do you get, how do, it's hard to get out of bed when you're sleeping in satin sheets or whatever Marvin Hagler said. Yeah. Right or wrong, how do, you, how do you keep that hunger, man? Because you just beat Jared Cannonier as a stud and you look phenomenal. I mean, how are you, how are you keeping his focus and his hunger? 
Yeah, well, I, this is how I provide for my family. This is when this is when daddy gets in the office and, and does what he does, right? This is what I, that's what I tell my kids. I go, daddy's going to get to work. This is work. And I want my kids to sleep in satin sheets. And if I want them to stay in satin sheets, I have to fight for it. And that's that's my mentality. That's how I drive myself every morning. Is this the first rematch you've ever had? No, no, no. I, I rematched Romero. Oh, you know, yeah. uh, uh, after a loss. Yes, yes, it yeah, is. That's what I meant to say, yeah. This is the first time you face somebody after they've beaten you. How do you approach uh, this? Uh, and what, what did the first one teach you? Yeah, well, it's certainly trickier. The first one taught me a lot, not only a, in a fight sense, but as a, as a character building sense because of how I dealt with the loss and, and, and all the stuff that went on there. You know, I've spoken, I think I spoke to you guys about it before. Um, in terms technically going to a rematch, it's tricky because he beat me. So, you know, he can beat you. So I'm working and developing different things to try and counteract the loss, work, watch his tape, watch his film, see things I can use, can't use, discard. But more than anything, I'm just trying to get better and get a different result in the first one. That's true. I mean, listen, there's times you have bad days of sparring when you got caught with something you shouldn't have got caught with. You don't really overanalyze it. You say, ah, that sucked. I'm not doing that again. But when it's on a world stage, sometimes you can overanalyze it. Sometimes you shouldn't fucking try to just go, all right, man, let's erase everything off the chalkboard and start from square. No, because you know you're a stud. You know you know how to fight. Maybe you just got caught. How much is right? I mean, what, what do you? Yeah. How much? It, is, it, it's exactly that. You don't need to reinvent the wheel. Exactly. You, know? you just, you just got to, got to get that a little bit better. Maybe make some slighted, slight adjustments. Maybe keep my hands up a little higher. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. That never hurts. <laughs> but don't you feel good knowing now you have a shot to kind of erase that, or, or to even that? You know, it's, it's got to also as much as you know that he, you know, he can beat you. You also know you can you can beat him, and it, it's got to be a good feeling to know, like, okay, now I can kind of make that right. Definitely, uh, I wouldn't be here if I didn't think I could beat him. If I didn't think I could beat him, I wouldn't be fighting him. It, it makes zero sense. Um, I believe in myself. I believe in the the skill sets. I believe in the work I've done. I believe in my team. And like I said, this is work. This is what I do for work. This is this is I'm the gladiator, and that's the arena. I'm going to get in there and do my thing. And what what do you think is his greatest strength? Uh, Adesanya's? Yes. Certainly he's striking. He's striking, he's timing. He's, he's just a great fighter. I can't, I can't limit it down to striking. Right. He's a great fighter across the board. Like, his wrestling defense is obviously high. His grappling's not bad. He didn't get subbed straight away when he got it on his back. You know what I mean? So he's, he's a good fighter. He's a champ for a reason. He's stayed there for a little while now. So, yeah, got to give respect when it's due. And, uh, yeah, he's a good fighter. Yeah, so you're saying that like uh, like Blahovich was was really, it's like wow he was he had a hard time with with Jan on the ground, but again he wasn't submitted and he wasn't stopped, which 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 you know going up weight class is pretty fucking impressive. Yeah, exactly. You know, I, I don't think he's as weak as everybody thinks he is, but again, I think I'm better. I think I can beat him, and that's what I'm going to try to achieve on the weekend. And uh, you're right now. You're in. Uh, I'm, I'm taking you're in Houston now. I am. I'm in the fighter hotel and just chilling. Yeah. Do you will you will you do anything before this fight, or are you just gonna stay there, cut weight, and and you know uh, not go out at all? Business as usual. Business as usual. Just cut the weight, weigh in, eat some good food, enjoy myself while I'm eating because I you know that's the the first best part about about fight week, and then get to work on get to work on the fight day, go home to my family, watch the fight. The other night, uh, Strickland versus Hermanson. I didn't watch it, no. no. So you said you don't watch too many other fights during that? You just channeled in or you were just busy that night? Yeah, I was channeled. I, try, I don't want to watch fights fight week. I'm trying to trying to get away from it all, you know, like trying to clear the headspace. There's enough fight crap going on around me. <laughs> Shit, yeah. Break out your Xbox. I'm with you. Yeah. Yeah. What's a good distraction for you during fight week? If you, if you like, like when you're, when you said it's just a bit much and you want to just kind of relax and clear your head, what's a good way for you to do that? I'm just the video games. That's all. Oh, I it is just the games. Yeah, <laughs> I just sit here playing video games, maybe reading some books, 
Mm. You can read when you're tense. That's amazing to me. I, by the way, I've got a book on tapes because my 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 comprehension has gotten so. Uh, my, I'm ADD, so I go on a book on tape. You can actually concentrate on a book when you're stressed. I'm not really stressed. Like that's the whole purpose of reading. It's like to get it away. You could. I wish yeah. you could just get like package your zen and ship yeah. some, ship some the little Jimmy. I would like a little. Zen. A little, I don't have any. <laughs> some zen that you can get from Robert Whitaker. He needs <laughs> the belt. Yeah, you're, you're literally more relaxed about to, to fight for the belt than I am walking out of the house to go to CVS. Yeah. Very <laughs> impressive. <laughs> well, if you can see what's been going on in New York CVSs, I, I am, I'm with you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's frightening. Well, Robert, look, I mean, this is a, a matchup. Every, you deserve this shot. Everybody is really happy for you. You've looked great. You fought 13 rounds since that last fight, uh, and you've looked incredible. So good luck on, on Saturday night. And um, I love Israel, but I also I love I love love watching you fight. And if you win, that means I get a third one. So I, I would like to see you. Uh, I'd like to see you take it this time, just so I get a third fight with you guys. Uh, thank you very much, brothers. I appreciate you guys having me on again. All right, the great Robert Whitaker. Thanks for coming on, man. All right, Robert. Yeah, I would like to see that. I, I, I like him so much. I would like to see. Um, a third fight with those guys, like, like a right. rubber match. And I'm going to take Robert Whittaker by decision. 1738. It's hard to bet. It's hard to pick against Israel. Yeah, well, I just did. You know why? Why not? I like to have a good time. I like to, I like to spice things up a little bit. Oh, speaking of that. By the way, let me, hold on. I, let me jump in. I think I'm going to take him by decision too. You know why? Because I think. You know, I know what I'm talking about. And also after Blahovich, again, again, Adesanya was not stopped. But I think Robert may, anyone fighting Israel should try to take a page out of that and maybe keep him pressed up against the fence if he can. It's hard to bet against Israel. Well, then don't. While you're thinking about that, my wife's making me for lunch three, spi like the chicken, meat chicken, uh, uh, I think they're Jamaican style. No, they're not Jamaican. Uh, empanadas. Empanadas? Oh, yeah, empanadas, yeah. They're so good, Jimmy. You don't like them? I love them. Oh, sorry. Jimmy, um, so yeah, I told you. But, so you're, doing, you're going the same with me. You're picking against Israel. How dare you? Uh, you? No, I'm going to take out Asanya, actually. All right, go ahead. Um, I'm trying to think of how, though. Go ahead. Pick away, pick away from the finish. I don't think he stops Whitaker again. I, I don't think. Uh, oh, Robert's still on the line. Let's make sure. That's know. okay. I, would, I mean, look, I think they're both great. But on Asanya striking is just so. Um, after what he did with Paul Acosta, um, I, I think Adesanya ekes out a decision. It might even be a, a, a three to two round decision. I think it's a very close fight. My thing is. And I can't, sorry, I can't pick against Izzy in the middleweight division until he loses in the middleweight division. I don't think I can pick against him either. I'm just, I'm doing it because I think when there's a will, there's a way. Yeah. You know? And Jimmy, some even say, this is the way. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jimmy, what do you want to plug? Let's start with the fights. Yes, yes. go ahead. This Saturday night, 271 um, from Houston, uh, Derek Lewis's hometown as he fights in the co main against Tui Vasa. Whitaker Adesanya, too. Uh, Whitaker is once again going for the middleweight belt. And I believe uh, the prelims, this is how they start. And watch all these fights, by the way. There are some great, great fucking fights. Where's the um, place, Jimmy? It's in Houston. Where? At the Toyota Center, I believe. Let me bring this up. Oh, Jimmy. It's not in front of me. Yes, sir. Ooh, Jimmy, don't. Don't make me blush. What we, where was it at? Oh, yes. Derek Lewis's hometown, the Toyota Center, um, where he unfortunately did lose to Cyril Gaon. I believe that was in Houston. Um, but now he is getting a chance to avenge. What? What else happened there? Jimmy, Houston, the first. What happened oh, the first time? The Bad News Bears. I forgot. Oh, uh, right. That was in Houston. They went into the Astrodome and they played. Obviously, I think what you're trying to say is that UFC 69, when your when you're top three best BFF, that's me. Yes. Shock the fucking world. That's, that's right. what that's happened. What that's what happened at that Toyota Center. So if you're saying that Robert Whitaker can shock everybody and say, yo, I'm back. If, he, if it's gonna happen, 
that's the place to make it happen. Because I, I, I might, there might be like some underneath in the rafters, underneath the fucking, uh, the fucking cage. Maybe I have some little sprinkled some, it's some dust left over from sprinkled some. I can't even think of what I'm saying. I know what you're I'm saying. I'm trying to say that. Wah, wah, wah. Jimmy, I was the champ there. Yes, you are. So maybe and you're the champ magic. here maybe twice a week. Maybe there's some magic. What I was trying to say is maybe there's some magic left over in that arena. Or maybe, maybe there was a little magic and you used it all up. Dude, he's so negative with everything in life. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm saying that you took all that magic and you gobbled it up and it worked. Well, it did. Got what right. am I plugging? Uh, let's say... Um, Plug something uh, so we can pretend the last fucking three minutes didn't happen. Oh, it's going to stay. I have... Uh, Coming up in two weeks, I have uh, New Hampshire, two shows in Boston, one in Connecticut. I also have uh, Poughkeepsie, New York. I forgot. I have a great little club in Poughkeepsie I'm doing, as well as Jim Thorpe, Pennsylvania, D.C., San Francisco. Go to my website. I'm coming to your city. How are you? And tonight, next Wednesday, I'm working around the corner from the Comedy Cellar, Fat Black Pussycat, working on my hour, just running, running my hour. Wait, what? Fat black what? Fat black pussycat. It's a it's a club, and it's a, it's where comics go. Uh, Louis runs his hour there. Colin. It's a really great place to 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 work your hour. It's a very small room, really Jimmy, intimate. Yes, sir. That's nice. Yeah, that's nice. Uh, you've been you're so busy and deservingly so. Well, uh, Jimmy, people yes. been hitting me up for Valentine uh, Day cami uh, yes. videos, yes. and I don't mind doing them. I don't mind doing them because I had fun with them. I did like three the other day. You know, other than that, I think you check out the latest Dana White looking for a fight, the Denver episode. Is it over a million views? No. I don't know, Jimmy. It is. It, it is. is. Better be. Don't thank me. Thank Dean Thomas and Dana, of course. Um, uh, hey, man, Matt Sarah BJJ on Instagram. Get your finger off the I gotta go button. You're about to press it to leave. Don't do it. No, I'm not. My finger is right. My hand is not. I have to go back with my right hand to the mouse. I'm actually my my my. I gotta go button is right there. That's it with me, Jimmy. I okay. miss you so much. I'll talk to you over the weekend, I'm sure. Yeah, let's eat soon, man. I, I want to see you in person. We'll grab 100%, some dinner. 100%. Right, you buddy. might have to come to Long Island, though. I don't yeah, know. yeah, I would love to. I'd love to have you over. All right, talk to you soon. Jimmy, talk to you really soon. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys.